I worked hard on my essays and my extracurriculars were unique and they were like not something very cliche. Like I find students uh, very tense about volunteering because they know that volunteering is something they need to check off their application, right? But in my case, I did not volunteer at all. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Abhishek Anand and you are watching my YouTube channel. Today I have again a very special guest for you guys and this time it is uh, Shorya Goyal. Shorya is a student from India and he is an international student studying in Canada and he is being doing great in his first year at UBC and uh, he has got scholarship. So the main focus of our video is for students who are coming as an international student and they want to get a scholarship in the top university in Canada. So how are we going to get that? That's what we're going to talk with Shorya about today. Shorya, let's let's begin with a short background from your set and a short introduction. Uh, th tell us about yourself. Uh, firstly, thank you so much, Abhishek, for having me here. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Shorya Goyal. And as Abhishek told, I am originally from India. I hail from Delhi, uh, the capital of India. And I just ended my first year at the University of British Columbia, Vancouver campus and uh, I am an undecided major. I do not know what I am majoring in right now. I am just exploring around, exploring the campus, meeting new people. And yes, that's that's pretty much about me. Awesome. Great. That's great, Shorya. Let's let's start, jump on to your journey of your application. Like you started your application, you, you created a, such a unique application that you got a scholarship, right? So tell us a little bit more about it, that what kind of scholarship did you get and how did you really get that kind of scholarship? Right. Uh, so UBC as a university has like a lot of scholarships ranging from 100% scholarships to like, like one time scholarships of like a $10,000 or $5,000, which are not really much. So I personally, I am the recipient of a something called IMES plus OIS. So IMES stands for International Major Entrance Scholarship plus OIS is the Outstanding International Student Award. With the combination of these two scholarships, my total scholarship amount is 100,000 Canadian dollars, which covers majoritarily of like almost like majority of my tuition fee what I pay is substantially is substantially very less than what others pay uh, UBC also has uh, something called the International Impact Award or the International Leader of Tomorrow these scholarships are 100% full scholarships and they cover everything from your tuition your flights your meals your housing but personally my scholarship for the first year uh, it just covered like some some like some things but it was like not you know a full scholarship uh, in terms of me getting the scholarship I personally feel that I work hard on my essays and my extracurriculars were unique and they were like not something very cliche like I find students uh, very tense about volunteering because they know that volunteering is something they need to check off their application right but in my case I did not volunteer at all because that was something that was not my passion right so my passion was public speaking and debating which I clearly showed in my application through my extracurriculars and my essay I think that is something uh, which created which made my application unique from others because others might have been trying to put off cliche points but I just focused on myself, like what I wanted to do. So that is something that might have set, set me apart and uh, me in me getting the scholarship. Plus I had uh, good grades in high school as well and good standardized test scores, which might have made my application successful in terms of getting into UBC plus a scholarship. Amazing. That's, that's actually awesome. Like you, you made your application based on what you thought it was best for you and you wanted to showcase uh, your skills. Like you, you said like you were good at public speaking and debating and all that kind of stuff you, you were taking part in those kind of uh, activities or events so that's what makes you unique so you don't have to do volunteering volunteering is always good that's a yeah. part of it you should do it for sure but it's not that only thing that you need for your scholarship application yeah exactly what were like some of the unique factors that you think that in your application makes you stand out like in, in, can you talk about like a little bit more specific yeah sure how, how did you like create those kind of attractions in your application. Right, right, right. Uh, so I think one of the biggest things in my application was uh, while I was in 10th, uh, like end of 10th grade and the start of 11th grade, I collaborated uh, with the professors from the University of Delhi and I wrote a research paper with them. And that time it was a COVID, like it was the COVID duration. So I actually catered my research paper. So my research paper is entitled The Effects of COVID-19 Vaccination on the Indian Population. And it is uh, published in the Journal of Medical Virology, which is like one of the top journals for medical research. In my research, Research, we, I also collaborated with the ICMR, which is the Indian Council of Medical Research. So it was in, all in all a very good research project, which took over one year of data collection and six months of paper
paper writing. So that was one thing I had in my application uh, alongside public speaking and debating. But if I want to talk about public speaking and debating, I was a national debater in India. Uh, I had represented uh, India's debating team in uh, top universities of the world like Harvard, Oxford, Cambridge. And I have also trained the Indian, uh, the Indian team to represent India. Alongside that, I've trained high schoolers, preschoolers uh, in public speaking and debating. I have trained more than 350 students uh, to lay their foray into the world of public speaking and oration. Plus, I organized one of the biggest e-model UNs of India. What made my model UN special was I had Bollywood celebrities like Bollywood celebrities and Bollywood playback singers as chief guests. So that that is something, another spike in my application because I managed to get these people into my conference. I was into chess. Yeah, I was also the national overall all-rounder of India as well. So these are some things I had in my application. Okay, that's, that's amazing, Shorya. So guys see look at this like Shorya has done really unique things and I'm sure like Shorya like getting that, those kind of opportunities is not easy like not everybody easily can you know get that kind of you know uh, opportunity so what what did you do to get those kind of opportunities when you were in school so like uh, getting into those kind of networks especially you know like how, how did you make that network for yourself and grab those opportunities yeah actually you're absolutely right you know getting exposure to such opportunities is a bit tough for instance like ICM and like you know all that all those things it's like can be a bit tough but nothing's impossible like I personally feel that the biggest reason I was able to do all of this like I never let go on any opportunity that was presented in front of me like even if it was not my forte right For, I would say that my forte is uh, public speaking writing debating chess right even if I was presented with an opportunity that did not fall in my forte for instance coding I did participate in it because that like I would definitely meet new people there right that's one way I made my network uh, LinkedIn is another thing I really really use and I encourage everybody to use me participating into those competitions then I like won some of those competitions and like these competitions were like pretty high scale like national I, I was the national debater in India then other people reached out to me saying that you know Shora we need you to do this come here join us collaborate with us uh, so that's how I sort of build my base uh, around all these things so in a nutshell to answer your question I never let go of an opportunity that was presented in front of me what Shora is frankly to say here is that network grows by building small small connections so yeah exactly put yourself out there like go and showcase yourself like even if it's a smaller event you might meet might maybe one or two people over there that's fine you meet one or two people but those one or two people might recommend you to another two or three people and then those two or three people can expand your network to even further right and uh, another thing i would like to mention is that while i was participating in all these competition and events i was not doing it just for the sake of mentioning that them in my application right I was not thinking that oh I'm doing this I will be mentioning it in my application perhaps because while I was doing all of this I didn't even know that I wanted to study abroad like my goal was just to build networks and just to get access to more good opportunities but I was just simply not limited to mentioning something on a paper but to build real life connections and get more exposure and you are more passionate about it too that you are already like developing your skills and you're focusing on something in particular if it's a, if that's public speaking so you are focusing in those kind of events like declamations yeah. or debates or allocations so that all helps right so definitely great. does and okay now so sure yeah so when you applied for UBC why what did you think about it like why did you only choose UBC as a university yes, I know it's a top university but did you have some specific things in mind that you want a top university to be in Canada as a UBC or you also wanted to pursue in US did you also try applications in US based universities how was that for you yes I actually always wanted to go to the United United States and I applied to actually a lot of US universities uh, and I got into top 10s as well but UBC was the only Canadian institution I applied to because A uh, UBC as you mentioned it is one of the top schools in Canada uh, plus I feel that like the area was something that was often like you know uh, for instance U of T is like located in Toronto and we all know that Toronto's temperature Toronto's weather you know it's like way more tougher than the temperature we have to go through in Vancouver right Vancouver max temperature is like minus 5 like I've hardly seen minus minus five as, a, as well but Toronto is like minus 10 sometimes goes up to minus 15 as well uh, that was surely one thing <laughs> yeah and uh, overall I personally feel UBC I feel as a university it is more lively and like the people there like I, I talked to some current students at UBC again through LinkedIn I feel that they were like more happy in their lives they were like able to do a lot a plethora of things at a single time but I was not able to see this while I was talking to students at the U of T because uh, I think they were like very limited to academics like that's my personal opinion that's like not generalized that's what I felt but that's the like 
though these are basically the main reasons why i applied to ubc as the only canadian institution what do you think like when you were applying for applications in the us and in canada so what was the success rate like you were also still getting a response from the us based uh, universities how was your interaction with them basically like ubc ke- the like my admission came in the midst of us universities but uh, as sort of during that duration i realized that canada could be better than the us in terms of student life because in us as a student if you want to work you can only work on campus like that's the us law irrespective of wherever you go in the us right but in canada you're not limited to just campus you can find jobs you can find internships outside of your campus right so i felt that that was something i wanted to do i wanted to develop more skills wanted to develop my resume my cv that's so basically like that's what like catered me towards canada more than the us despite the fact that i was getting responses i was getting scholarships admissions from the united states as well but by that time i was already more uh, sided towards canada that's a, that's a really good take uh, shorya i think it's because you are open to more opportunities you're not limiting yourself to your network to be stay within the school it's okay to do that while you are studying i highly recommend people doing on campus jobs they give you a very good experience and uh, start helping you build up your resume and at the same time you get paid and you are able to manage your time it really yeah. helps do it for sure but at the same time choose canada or being open to off campus opportunities and canada is also very welcoming and they yeah. have opportunities for students like uh, who want to like work off campus so it, uh, i think i think you really made a very good decision on that thing so yeah to like really end our conversation like is there some one or two tips that you would like to give to students who want to start uh, their application process uh, whether it's for the scholarship or the application overall so to get into a top university in canada like maybe few tips that you would like to share yeah sure well i feel that if you like want to get into a top university with a good scholarship grades actually play a very important role alongside your overall profile right like the first thing on an application are your high school grades like literally when you start an application overseas like they will first ask for your normal information your name and everything but literally like the next thing they ask is your high school grades right from 9 to 12 i feel that high school grades actually play a really important role if you want to bag a scholarship because scholarships yes they are given on the basis of extracurriculars as well but a combination of solid extracurriculars plus higher high school grades will actually get you a bang on scholarship that's something i would advise if you can like really work on your high school grades that will really help but at the same time if you do not want to like so, you know uh, that's something one thing i uh, recommend is that just like follow your passion because universities do not want all rounders they just want you to be good at one thing because they want all rounded classes not all rounded individuals they want you to place create a class that's all rounded so that everyone can learn something from the other classmate or the or the peer group so just follow your passion be it anything if you're uh, if you so for instance i con- continued my passion in public speaking and debating you can do so in baking like i know my friends like one of my friends just built their entire application around baking as to how baking transform their lives why they do baking right so something as minimalist as baking could uh, also like make you unique again like very generalized but just follow your passion good high school grades these are like the main things and like essays please start working on your essays at least 3 months prior like because like essays are actually a very crucial component of your application because everything else is just a piece of paper the admission officer will get to know you from the essays you write and when i talk about essays you do not have to be a good writer you just have to be a good storyteller your essay so essays grades and uh, your overall profile so i think these are the advices i would like to give someone who's applying abroad and these are some most crucial parts of the application which play the most important role and the same thing you know like you said you have to be a great storyteller so even when we like you know go for opportunities like interviews and all in the other companies that's what people want to hear they want to see the real you like what you yeah. have been doing so once you have been doing stuff you have things to tell you you have things to share with someone then obviously you are going to become a good storyteller at that time it's just like putting that into words it's sometimes challenging for some people but don't really worry about it firstly focus on building your profile and once you have built your profile as sure as i said focus on those essays try to make a story for yourself like go one step at a time like build it from one part to the like the, uh, the second uh, paragraph and the second paragraph to third so that's go go in a way write this essay in such a way that it's like going step by step and the person is getting more interested in reading your application it's not like right. just one or two paragraphs and then he's not reading the rest of it you have to gain his interest and be prepared do watch some youtube videos there are there is ton of content from scholars who have like written very good essays on very very different topics um youtube is the 
the best resource. And then other than that, Google Scholarly offers research papers. I think I use yeah. that a lot when I was in school as well. So make sure that you keep on looking at in those kind of resources and reading research papers that will help in your writing as well. That's great, Shoya. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming and sharing your journey and sharing your experiences while applying for your application. It's going to help a lot of students and students like don't worry if you are getting started. It's it's just the start for you. It's fine. Just start right now. You have to right. raise the day. Begin from now and you can get a scholarship like Shoya, whether it's like a smaller scholarship with a 50% or a 75% or it's a full ride. Everything counts. Uh, thank you so much Shoya again and do make sure everybody that now you like, share and subscribe to my channel and I will keep bringing such content for you guys and there will be more and more podcasts and interviews. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Thank you so much Abhishek. It was a pleasure speaking to you and all the best everyone.